That was freaking terrifying. Man, there's no escape from that sun. My pride got the better of me. Screw his fucking hostel. There's no visible path as such. A very strange night. All right, crazy kids. Uh, I took a four-hour drive yesterday up to Morvich campsite uh, near Shield Bridge, and this is me setting off on the Cape Wrath Trail from where I left it last time. You may have seen that video over a year ago where I failed at this point, near the Falls of Glomach. I'm heading there just now, so we'll see what that brings. I've got a better idea what I need to do this time, but ideally I'd prefer just to cross the river further upstream and bypass it altogether. The weather yesterday at the campsite was absolutely fantastic. Then during the middle of the night, around about three in the morning, there was huge flashes of lightning and thunder and then the rain came on so uh, it's off for the time being there's little bits of sun poking out here and there the humidity levels are through the roof I was hoping that thunderstorm last night might clear the air but uh, it's not I haven't uh, bothered bringing a tent for this journey um, obviously last night I camped in my teepee because it was in the back of the car but uh, what I have done is taken a tarp with me and a walking pole uh, and so I can configure it into a kind of tent situation but there's lots of bothies on this trail so um, hopefully I won't need to use it too often I didn't see the point in lugging a tent around and I could just take the tarp. Weather looks pretty ominous. I've got a couple of clicks of climbing and then I'll be making my way down to the Falls of Glomach. I might bypass it if I can. If I can cross the rivers, I'll do that because every time I look at the map, it scares the bejesus out of me. I think there's a couple of English ladies that are doing it. They were at the campsite. I think they're section hiking it. But they're supposed to be going to the Bothy tonight. Yeah, it's got a weird name. Mao Budi or something. I don't know how you pronounce it. Gaelic of some kind. I'm just having a little rest here before I push on further up. It's only about half past eleven so I've got all day. What a bastard of a climb. I knew the first day would be hard. That was freaking terrifying. There's the Falls of Glomach. And I've kind of basically skirted along that ridge there. There is a path, a very, very slight path. And it's frightening. It's not over yet, I've still got to get down here, but I think the worst of it's done. I don't do well with heights. That frightens the life out of me. There's like, just sheer drops. 
the side of your foot. That certainly got the adrenaline going. Skirting along the side of a mountain with a sheer drop to your death isn't my idea of fun. Right, I'm getting the hell off of here. Feet are killing me. I'm about six kilometers away from uh, the Bothy tonight. It's just uh, around that corner and up some crazy terrain, probably. Well, I can tell you that's a sight for sore eyes. Oh, what a slog of a day. Looks like quite a nice little boffy as well. There's quite a few footprints going down this track. Uh, a lot of them look quite fresh. So I'm just hoping that there's nobody in the boffy, but if there is, I'll have to share it. So this was the bothy I stayed in last night, Mao Budi or however you want to pronounce it. Um, and there were people here. Uh, there was a guy from Germany. Well, he was German, but he lived in uh, Switzerland. And a French woman and her daughter. Crazy, she dragged, the daughter could have only been about 10, 11, and she's dragging her all the way along the Cape Bath Trail. Kid didn't look in the slightest bit phased by it. Um, there was also the English uh, ladies, the two English women. They turned up about an hour and a half behind me. And then, unbeknown to everybody else, there was a, a hot young chick from the Czech Republic turned up. But like, um, nobody knew anything about it. Because the French woman had her up the stairs before um, anybody got to meet her. I only met her this morning. Obviously uh, <laughs> concerned that maybe me or the German guy would try and hit on her because she was super hot like. Today, I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do. Um, my feet aren't too sore today, but I think I might take it easier. Uh, there's a bothy not too far from here called Benadraig Lodge. That's it there. But there's also Bernays here. And I could probably make that today. And then, the following day, I could try and go for Kinloch U, um, which is a way up off this part of the map because there's a campsite up there. I don't know, I'm just, there's so many alternative routes in here. The route that I plotted into my GPS is not the one I'm going to take because when I'm looking at the map and I can see the, the contours, eh, they're pretty scary. In fact, over here at Bernays, if I stay there the night, you could see this kind of stuff here. There's a big pass there, and then I'd have to get to Craig that way, or I could go around this way. But then there's a wire bridge this way, so it's all six and a half a dozen. I don't know, I think I'll figure that out tomorrow when I wake up. <sighs> that like Czech Republic girl, she was like doing the Scottish National Trail, which is it's a monster. She's only got three weeks to do it, and she's like doing 40 kilometers a day and stuff. I don't know what people are made of. She didn't have a map or GPS or anything. She just had it all programmed in on her phone. I mean, it's no wonder people fall to their deaths and go missing.
Right, so I've just come down that track there and uh, there's another little bothy across here called Bendronig Lodge. I'm not going to stay there, I'm going to push on towards Bernays which is up there but uh, that's only half a kilometre away at the most so I might as well go down there, check it out, have a bit of lunch. I'm assuming that the small building is the bothy I don't know what the larger building at the back is possibly a private shooting lodge or something probably locked up but uh, yeah let's go down and have a look at it Wow, this is all right. <laughs> hey. Decent place. Man, there's no escape from that sun. All right, crazy kids. I'm at uh, Bernays Bothy. That was a bit of a slog. The Land Rover track that um, came out of Ben Dronig Lodge. Uh, it ran out pretty quick and I had to make my way across uh, a lot of bog land again. So my uh, nice dry feet and dry boots that I had got soaked again. There was no path or anything going in. A uh, bit of a ball buster to be honest. Anyway, we're here now, and I've got the place to myself. I'm going to get something to eat, and probably get an early night, listen to a bit of my audiobook, um, and have a whiskey. But yeah, I'm uh, drying some clothes outside, charging a battery up using my solar charger. So, I've got to go up this pass tomorrow. Uh, 596 meters. It was totally relentless coming in here. There was no breeze. The sun was blazing down on me. I thought I was going to get heat stroke. I just kept drinking as much water out of the streams that I could get. But yeah, I survived another day. I think what I'm going to do however with this Cape Wrath Trail is section hike it. I'm 49 now. I'm struggling with this. Big style. Especially in this heat. But if I could get to Ullapool, that only leaves the other pool to keep wrath, but to do at a later date. Well, I have to say, I'm a convert to the meds burner. It's ideal for this kind of carry-on. Silent as well. I like it better than gas. This evening, I'm having a uh, chili, rice, some cheese, and all that in there. Homemade, dehydrated, and it's fantastic. As soon as you've put water into it and rehydrated it, boiled it up, it tastes just like your own homemade chilli. ...gained some traction at the time. It was soon eclipsed by Darwin's theory of evolution. Please stay inside the house tonight, the lovers. Lately there's been violence in the street. Ah, 
morning glampers easy get a wheelchair over that oh sore this morning Does that look right? Never tell. So I'm feeling kind of more positive about things today. First couple of days were hard, um, as you would expect. It's real easy to want to throw in the towel when you get yourself out of your comfort zone. But I've always reckoned by the third, fourth day, you start to get into the swing of this. I'm actually quite excited about it today. I'm not looking forward to that climb over the pass. It'll be a slog. It's all mossy, boggy ground. Um, I'll just have to try and navigate my way as best I can. But what I reckon is, your best is going at your own pace. That's been the problem in the last couple of days, is I've been pushing myself to, you know, get over the next pass or get up the next hill. And I'm better just like, slowing myself right down, chilling the hell out. I'm gonna have some porridge before I go. It's one of those, I don't know, blueberry and cranberry flavored porridges. I don't even like porridge. I've never liked it as a kid. Alright, let's give this porridge stuff a try. Yep, that reminds me of my childhood. And the whole reason I dislike porridge. exactly as I remember it. Fucking horrible. Tasteless gruel. Right, that's getting left here for somebody. I'll hang that up and some muesli eater can enjoy that. It's just not appetising. I'm sure it's full of energy but it's tasteless. Can get a hint of blueberries in there. Look at it, it's disgusting. Nah. I'll have a couple of Mars bars and some beef brisola that I made. That is fucking horrible. This is more like it. Could do a sharper knife. Damn, I should have brought my sharpening tool. Cured meat, man. Cured meat. Oh, yeah. Look at the meaty goodness of that. Mm. Delicious. Salt and wine, garlic, rosemary. Um, what else? Juniper berries for two weeks in a Ziploc bag in the fridge. Wrapped in salt and then muslin and then hung for a further 10 days. Until the weight reduces about 30% then it's ready. And it's cured. And it doesn't need to be stored in the fridge. Better if you keep it in the fridge. But uh, it's perfect for a trip like this. Mm. 
Oh, that's good. That's better. That's more like it. That's food. And there's bloody oats. Porridge. Anyway, that'll lighten the load. I've labelled it, stuck it up there. The mice won't get it up there. I don't think the mice would want it anyway. And I dare say some outdoor nubber will come along and go, ooh! A main meal. But it's meat for me. All right, it's about half past 10 in the morning. Sun is blazing out there and I'm ready to go again. The pack's beginning to feel a little bit lighter. Having got rid of that porridge and consuming some of the food that I've been carrying for the last couple of days. Once Mars is terraformed, this is what it's going to look like. Quite a view. It's me at the top of this uh, 600 meter pass, or 590, something like that. Uh, just got a phone signal there. Phoned my old man. Let him know I'm okay, still alive. So it's all downhill now, down to Craig. I think there's a bunkhouse down there. So. Uh, Go check that out, maybe stay there the night or push on to another bothy. Just depends how I feel. I was told by the German in the bothy on the first night that the guy that owns the hostel stroke bunkhouse in Craig, in the German's own words, the most miserable man in Scotland and I can now completely concur with him. I just went there and the guy's mowing his lawn and I'm standing there and he just like continues to mow his lawn and he's going round in circles and I'm standing and I'm like what's with this guy is he going to acknowledge me on about the fourth circle round he goes I'll be with you in five minutes and then he's away for another five of anyway and so I just picked up my pack and uh, disappeared I'm away to Let's see, what's it called? Eason Dorka Bothy tonight. It's only, well, seven kilometres, I would reckon, from where the hostel is. It's something I could have done without, but uh, my pride got the better of me. Screw his fucking hostel. Uh, screw his shower and his bunk and getting clothes washed. I don't need it. He's not getting my money. What a prick. Um, so, yeah, I've had to come through this woodland. It's a really steep incline. I'll let you see how thick it is. Like that, that kind of track all the way up. Uh, a lot steeper than that in bits. So uh, yeah, that was my experience of uh, this miserable little town called Craig. And it's only inhabitant by the looks of it. Um, what a wanker. So don't go there. If you ever come here, and you find yourself in this little shithole village called Craig. Don't go to the guy's hostel. It's called Jerry's Hostel. Fuck him. All right, so here I am at uh, Eason Dorka, Bothy. It's little more than a, a wooden shed. 
I'm not going to be out here long because the uh, midges are horrendous. I've got smidge on and there's that many of them, I think they're all suicidal. Anyway, it's a nice little spot in the woodland here, a little bit of woodland kicking around. Some nice water, a bridge in the distance. Right, I'm gonna, I'll show you what it's like inside. The midges are fucking horrendous. God damn it. Right. Ah, here we are. So yeah, it's just like a, a wooden shed. Nothing exciting, but it's very, very warm in here. Very well insulated. It's up to premises, and with no idea what they might be facing, strange light. Stephens, now alone at the back gate, sensing there was no danger, Peniston got up and helped Burroughs to his feet, ordering him to remain on the edge of the clearing while he attempted to get a closer look at the peculiar object. As he drew near, he could feel static in the air. All right, get a little light on the subject. There we go. Whoa, too bright maybe. That'll do. Yeah, so uh, I was a bit annoyed with that guy at the hostel. Um, my feet were aching, I was tired, I really just wanted to get in there. He just seemed like he he wasn't interested in the slightest. The German guy in the bothy that I was in the first night, um, he said he was the grumpiest guy in Scotland. I thought, I don't know how that's possible, I thought I was the grumpiest guy in Scotland. But yeah, this, this dude beat me. So um, he didn't have anybody in his hostel either, it was empty. So he obviously, I don't know why he's even running a hostel, to be honest. Why would you run a hostel if you just don't want to deal with people? This'll do as a dust tonight. Yeah, sure, it's a, a shed in the middle of nowhere, but it's all I need. Plus, it gives me a really good start for um, Kinlock U tomorrow. It's only about 11 clicks away. And it's not that bad a walk. I think it's all Land Rover track all the way there. So... I can uh, basically get the head down and go for it and get in there tomorrow afternoon. And I think what I'm going to do is it's Saturday, it'll be Saturday tomorrow. So I'll see if I can get a B&B &B or maybe even a hotel room or even a bunkhouse or something like that if there's one available. Um, get all the clothes washed and then I'll either spend one night there or maybe two nights just to recuperate because I am really sore. I've got a couple of bad bites. One Clegg bite on my foot. It's all swelling up. Got one in my hand there. So, um, yeah, just recuperate for a bit. One, two nights can lock you, and then I'll go for Cheneval Bothy, spend the night there, and then on the last day, I'll just get the head down and go for Ullapool. Um, that's going to be a slog, but I could do it in a day. Get up there, again, maybe a B&B &B or a hotel room or something. And then I'll get the bus down the road, pick up the car, and get back home. And I think that's sufficient enough. I've put myself through the ringer. I don't know how people, you know, do the whole Cape Wrath Trail in one go. Not at this time of year. Not in like, end of July. Midges are horrendous out there. It's alright when the sun's out, but then it's hard to walk with the heat. I think it's about 28 degrees today. 28 degrees C. Don't ask me what that is in Fahrenheit. You can figure it out, Americans. I don't know why you still measure an imperial. Jesus Christ, it's the 21st century. So, uh, as Robert Kilroy Silk once said, See you in the morning. Morning, boys and girls. I'm just away to get some water. What's with the crazy garb I hear you cry? Um, the midges out there are so bad, I have to put all this on just to get to the stream and back. It's crazy. Uh, and the so-called <laughs> free advertising smidge, it doesn't work. It did work 
with some of the midges earlier on in the trip but not these ones up here these ones are like serious badass midges um, they must have mutated and adapted to this stuff because I think they actually quite like the smell of it Alright Twisted Freaks I'm having a bit of a zero day today uh, I've got a swollen foot, probably due to that Clegg bite. I'm not sure it's either that or I've pulled something. But um, I've put this gel pack on it that I found in the kitchen freezer. And um, it seems to be helping, it's bringing the swelling down. So all going well, I'll be back on the trail tomorrow on my way to Cheneval. Uh, it's a 17 mile hike. Doesn't look too bad, there's a couple of dodgy bits. Um, and the following day, I'm probably looking at about the same to get to Ullapool. Um I'm going to probably finish up there and return later on. Maybe next year, next spring or something and finish off this trail. Yesterday afternoon, um, when I arrived here in the rain, I was soaked to the skin and I was all for just getting a bus out of here and going home but um, once I got dried off and showered and went for a few pints and then met a few other hikers that were doing the Cape Wrath Trail it's kind of like got me motivated again so we'll see what happens um, it's not easy this is hard it's a very hard hike but um, there's something rewarding about it um, something addictive about it you put yourself through the ringer and then just when you think you're about to quit you want to get back out there and do it again there's a bit of camaraderie that happens with uh, all the other hikers and they kind of push you on it's good fun you think you've not really experienced anything other than hardship but then when you look back over several days you kind of laugh at all the different things that's happened like that guy at that bunkhouse, the um, Jerry's bunkhouse, and that was hilarious. Well, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing today. I'm just going to chill here. I'm going to listen to some audiobooks. Uh, the guy that has the pub said he might open it up a little bit early for me, so I can get wired into a few beers. Um, maybe get something to eat, bar lunch dinner something like that I had dinner there last night it was pretty good they had a venison casserole and it was uh, well tasty so yeah that's what I'm doing today not much sitting here hoping this goes down hoping I can get back on the trail tomorrow um, it's a pity because it's actually quite a nice day today the sun's out which means the midges will be down um, and I kind of wish I was actually doing it but i need a bit of a rest when i arrived here yesterday there was a another person in this bunkhouse uh, sleeping down there she's polish and she was really lovely and we got on like a house on fire had a good laugh um went out for a bite to eat last night together and um yeah i really like her i think she's single i hope she's not a lesbian or something but um we swap numbers and she doesn't stay that far from me. She lives down in Dalgetty Bay, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to get in touch with her once uh, I come off the trail and maybe catch up for a bite to eat and a drink. But yeah, it was good. It was nice. You kind of meet people in the most unexpected places at the least expected times. So see how that goes. Good morning, boys and girls. Um, so. I set off from Kinloch U about a couple hours ago, 9 o'clock in the morning uh, and I'm here on the way to Cheneval, Bothy so it's going to be a bit of a ball buster of a day 17 miles to cover um, the path's been pretty good so far uh, all the way from Kinloch U a bit of a Land Rover track but that's going to run out 
in the next kilometre or so and then it should probably be a sort of single footpath and then I've got uh, a good few kilometres of marshland to cover hopefully with this good weather the ground might be a little bit more solid but um, you know what Scotland's like once the water gets into the ground it's there all year round but uh, yeah, no midges today, it's too hot for them Clegs are a pain in the ass though Keep getting attacked by them every 10 seconds There's a midge on the lens Ullapool is the, the goal for this trip I may continue on, I don't know, see how I feel But um, I think I'll be happy enough with getting to Ullapool My foot's still a little swollen um, but I'm just going to put up with it for the time being. If I can get to other pool, I'll be happy with that. God, this is tough. There's no visible path as such. It's just all... Marshland. Ah, oh, midges. Insects are unbearable. I just bumped into a couple of chinless wonders, outdoor nubbers. Uh, managed to bypass them. So I waved hello and I got that kind of expression, you know, the kind, the kind of. They never even waved back. There you go. That's what you get. Muesli munchers. <laughs> you could just tell. I had two poles each. I've had one pole this whole trip and I think it's been on my backpack the whole time. I tried it once. I hate it. The only reason I brought it is to prop up the tarp. So, I've got, I don't know, still a fair bit to go but at least there's a track now. Um, I'm going to estimate 8 miles, I'm more than halfway there. A lot of it's downhill and there's track so I think the worst of it's over, hopefully. Oh, looking forward to getting into Cheneval, see what it's like. Hopefully get the place to myself because I'm such a sociable bastard. God damn midges! I'm trying to film here. Well, there's a sight you don't see every day. Oh, Clegs are unbelievable. They just keep landing on you, buzzing around your head. I just sat down there for five minutes and I killed about eight in a row and they just keep coming at you if they land on you for like a second they bite and they draw blood <sighs> it's a wild country beautiful though if only there was a way of killing all the midges and the clegs pretty good. I've just spotted the Bothy in the distance and there's somebody there so I might not get any filming done tonight. I'll, uh, I'll film some stuff tomorrow before I leave. Um, just depends on what this person's like. Top of the morning. Oh man, I didn't take any video footage last night. There were, I counted, 14 people in that bothy last night and a dog some guy brought this pup along it had a, a collar on it with a little dangly metal thing that jingled all night every time it moved so hardly anybody got any sleep a few people tented outside I slept upstairs with another must have been another eight or nine bodies there there was um Two Germans in another room that never said a single word, never interacted with anybody. Oh, not a pleasant evening. There was one girl there, she was alright. 
Um, at least you had a bit of a sense of humour but the rest of them I mean, look, don't get me wrong they weren't unpleasant just like personality injection wouldn't go amiss but um, I guess that's what you get when you visit such a busy bothy as that and I think the reason it's so busy is because uh, that's, this is where the Monroe's are, the Fisherfield 6 or I think it's 5 now one of them must have got demoted like Pluto where the hell am I going? a very strange night I'm glad that one's over I've just now got the slog telepool. I've um, got a lot of this boggy shit to walk over and then I'll be able to hit the motorway and I think the last 12 or 13 kilometres are all motorway walking I ain't, I ain't uh, making it hard for myself I think that's enough for me uh, on the Cape Wrath Trail the midges are unbelievable I've never come across anything like it there's no way I am continuing on any further if it's going to be like this uh, I don't think I've ever seen as many midges out before pretty brutal so yeah that was my night at Cheneval no video footage of it didn't even take a picture of the bothy I don't think I'll ever go back horrible place bit of a tip as well, typical MBA bothy that gets used too much rubbish lying around everywhere uh, and full of not very exciting people be interesting to see if uh, any of the 14 that were there last night happened to accidentally come across this video sorry guys but you were boring as fuck right so just gonna bash on get the hell out of here uh, and just think of a nice cold beer at the Arch Inn in Ullapool one of my favourite pubs great little place oh looks very tranquil and picturesque right whoever designed this trail is a fucking sadist I've been in a world of hurt today Oh, it just seems to get tougher and tougher every day. It's just been like climb after climb over boggy, horrible marshland. I mean, it looks flat there just now, but I've had to climb up about 400 odd meters. And every time you get to a little summit, an, it's a false summit, there's another little bit and then another little bit and then it dips down and it goes back up and then it dips down and it goes back up I've had that all day plus the track and the map's not very clear it tells you where the track is, it's not clear at all I was looking at the GPS and I'm like there's no track here there's nothing it's crazy it is a hard hard walk <laughs> I'm starting to get angry with myself why am I doing this? who am I trying to prove anything to? am I trying to prove something to myself? what am I trying to prove to myself? that I could put myself through hardship? yes, you can put yourself through hardship well done it's like a living hell and the weird thing is I know after two or three days of being home, I'm going to miss it. There's Loch Broom and the road taking me all the way to Ellipool. I just fell flat on my face there, caked in mud. Nice, huh? Just got to get off of this now.
Right, just a big uh, long hike along the motorway now to Alipo. I was a bit dehydrated. This is the first river I've found. Oh, in the space of about two hours, two, three hours I've done without water. So I've just went and filled up here. It all comes off the, the hills. Fresh as the day. Nice clear, crystal clear water. Anyway, I've got about, I don't know, 12 kilometers or something to hike, so I better get a move on. All right, I'm approaching Alipool now. Uh, it's seven o'clock at night. I've been walking for 10 hours straight today, and I am knackered. My feet are killing me. I must have pulled about 20, 21 miles in total. I don't know, I'll calculate it out when I get home. Anyway, I'm here, just a little walk along the front, get to the arch end, get a pint ordered, and then find out what I'm going to do for accommodation. I love this place, one of my favourite villages of all time. I want to move here one day. It's just such a cool little place, nice people. Lots of things to do.